We're underway. It's showtime at the Memorial Center in the slot. Mick Thomas scores! Mason Mick Thomas. Robertson. Here's Robertson. Drop pass. Back and forth. They score. Highlight real goal. Nick Robertson. Here's a steal. Coming in. Joe Ruin a breakaway. Shoots it. Stopped by Hunter Jones. With two new faces in the Peterborough lineup, new faces on the Kingston side as well. You've been a player, you've been a coach in these situations. What is it like uh, in the room around the team when you have uh, some new kids on the block, I guess, as they say, coming into town? Back into Dargan Chinsev. Galant shoots. He scores. The winner, Zach Galant, his second goal of the night in overtime on a power play. Make it a 6 Five, Peterborough victory. Grandin on the steal. He walks in on the backhand. The back door. They score. What a play. Brady Hins. Stolen. Here's Robertson for the hat trick and 50. Robertson goes in. Shoots. He scores. Number 50 for Nick Robertson. It's third of the game. The first Peterborough beat the score 50 since 1993. The voice of the Peterborough Peets, Pete Dalladay, continuing an intergenerational line of Dalladay broadcasters in Peterborough. Pete calls the action on your TV and is the son of Peterborough Sports Hall of Fame inductee and former longtime Pete's color man, Gary Dalladay. Pete, a pleasure to have you on OHL Voices today. Oh, it's, uh, it's great to be here, Josh. I've been watching a few. I uh, just finished the Jimmy Gilchrist one, which was great. And uh, it's, it's been a great way to kind of spend some extra hours here in the summertime. Keeping an eye on those division rivals and anticipation <laughs> for December, of course. Um, of course, your dad, Gary, as I mentioned, he passed away a couple of years ago, was a big figure in the Peterborough sports community. You've been, been behind the mic uh, with the Pete since the mid-90s, if I recall, meaning you would have had the chance to call some games with your dad. And I'm sure that was a real thrill for both of you. Yeah, it was, it was for sure. Yeah. We, we started doing the games together in 96. Um, I had done a few years before that at a competing radio station and then his, uh, his station got the, the rights to the games and then we started working together. And I know it was a, it was a huge thrill for him at the time. I was only 26 at the time. And so when you're 26, you're like, um, you don't appreciate it as much as, uh, eventually I would, but, um, uh, it was a lot of fun. We probably we did over a thousand games together, and and to get paid to watch hockey with your dad is uh, was a pretty good gig while it lasted, and and it, it was a good run. We we saw some great years and a few years that uh, not so great, but overall just just some fun times. I'm sure lots of memories you cherish today. Of course, the uh, the media room at the PMC named after your father, um, a, a real influential person and a real athlete in his day as well. So. Uh, you know, great of the Peets to, to, to do that tip of the cap there in the building. Maybe, maybe tell us a little bit about life outside of the broadcast booth for yourself. I believe you've done some teaching over at Loyalist College. Um, and you've also got your own morning show. Tell us about that. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been a great journey on top of doing the Peets games. I do a lot of lacrosse as well. Um, you know, I'm doing some lacrosse out in Halifax now in the National Lacrosse League, which is, uh, has been fun. And, um, yeah, I had a brief stint teaching some sports journalism students there in, uh, in Belleville, where you spent some time, and we crossed paths, I'm sure, there. And uh, it's a great city. It's unfortunate, uh, you know, the OHL doesn't have a team there, but they have hockey, and that's the main thing. And uh, that's where I went to school as well. So to teach there I, uh, later in life was kind of kind of cool. I remember going there as a student and, and covering guys like Richard Park and Daniel Cleary, and, and they had some good Belleville Bulls teams when I was a student there. So that was a lot of fun, and I have a strong connection with that city. So, um, and then, yeah, I got a busy life. I got three kids, uh, one still going in hockey. He's going into his Bantam year, and we find out kind of what that looks like starting on, on Friday. So uh, it's going to be different for everyone. And um, as he starts high school, too, and I do a morning show here with uh, uh, with Danny Guppy, who's got some Belleville ties, too. Right, uh, right. So. Uh, we're both hometown kids doing a morning show in our hometown. So it, it's a great gig. I feel pretty blessed to be able to do that. And then every Thursday during normal uh, times, uh, I get to go to the Memorial Center and, and hang out there for a couple hours. Well, I'm sure it's been an honor being able to call games for a Pete's franchise that has produced some of the game's greats. You know, Bob Gainey, Steve Eiserman, Chris Pronger. And then a lot of people forget some of the game's greatest coaches, Scotty Bowman, Roger Nielsen, and of course the legendary Dick Todd. 
uh, in Peterborough. Perhaps you can share a few of your favorite Pete's memories from over the years in the booth. Oh, wow. From, from in the booth alone. Yeah. Um, you know, you mentioned Scotty Bowman and Scotty comes back the odd time. Uh, he's, you know, they've honored him with the banner. And the, I remember that night that was big. Uh, Scotty actually uh, traded my dad when my dad played for the Pete's briefly. <laughs> Uh, so he brought that up. Uh, he traded him, to, I think, to St. Thomas, Ontario at the time. And, um, and he, he promised him he'd get him back. He, he, he never did. He sort of, uh, that was the last day seen each other. But he, he's got some good Scotty stories. And, of course, my dad was good friends with Roger Nielsen, too. So, um, you know, lots of stories there. Lots of great memories. Um, the old press box at the Memorial Center. I don't know if you remember that before the renovations. It used to be high up. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so it was quite a hike to get up there, but uh, my dad had a way of getting some guests up there to come join us for intermissions. And everyone from Don Cherry to, uh, you know, the who's who, Mr. Branch had often come up when he was in town and make that hike and uh, come up and visit us. So uh, at one point we had a door going into the press box there, the old Memorial Center. We got everyone to actually sign it with a Sharpie. Uh, and I don't know where that door ended up when they did the renovations, but I'd love to have it. It was, it was uh, the who's who of hockey was on that door. So lots of great memories, uh, some great stories from, from riding the buses as well. And uh, maybe one day I'll get my friend Mike Davies of the, of the Peterborough Examiner to, uh, to write a book because um, th there's some good ones for sure. That's right. Mike, of course, uh, at the Examiner, he's been covering the Pete's for a long time as well. I'm sure you guys uh, can share some <laughs> great memories together. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, you know, Mike's been there. It's funny. Mike started pretty much the same year that, that I started. And we both had a had a real good run there of, uh, of not missing a game, which is uh, incredible, especially with, you know, Mike has a lot of vision problems and eyesight problems and and is basically he's legally blind. So uh, what what ended up happening and you, you probably saw it, you know, say in Belleville, for example, Mike always made sure he sat beside my dad and I so he could plug into our feed because the audio feed, the play-by-play -play, helped him in his job in the later years, right? So mm. that's why we were always kind of huddled in really close together there. Uh, but he's been part of the, the, the journey and he has seen so much. And um, certainly uh, I, we miss, uh, we, we miss uh, each other on the road. I'll never forget the time Mike went into a hotel room in Sudbury right beside me. And all I heard was this scream. There's this lady screaming. Well. Apparently she hadn't checked out yet and she was sitting there in the corner having a bottle of wine. <laughs> Here comes Davies walking in with the, and she just screamed out loud. I'm like, what's going on? Oh, he like, went in the wrong room. <laughs> well, yeah, but the key worked. So uh, lots of great stories with Mike uh, as yeah. well. Yeah. Some good media stories on the road. We forget oh. about those sometimes. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I mean, you know, you become family uh, with, with the other media and the trainers and, all those people you spend hours and hours with. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm sure it's like that with every OHL team, but in Peterborough being, we're a bit of a smaller town and it's kind of a community owned team somewhat. Uh, I sometimes wonder if we're a little bit more tight, tight knit than perhaps some other franchises. Definitely in Peterborough, you know, some tight bonds there, but you're right, uh, Pete, the OHL, it really is one big community. And I think that's what's special about the league, just the bonds that, you know, as someone who's been around the league for, you know, the better part of a decade and just the friendships I've made people in different cities and with different organizations and even people who have worked in the league and moved on to other things, you know, you keep in touch and, and they're really, yeah. they're really great friendships. Um, it's, it's really too bad last season was cut short because the Pete's had a, a solid group and it really looked like they could have done big things in the playoffs. They overcame a, you know, a challenging start with nine straight on the road to start the season and handled themselves quite well. Of course, Mike Oak went out and added Akil Thomas at the trade deadline. And you had one of the more dominant seasons from a Pete in recent memory with what Nick Robertson did. Maybe you can yeah. put last season into a few words for us. Yeah, well, you know, disappointing for sure the way it came to an end, but everyone was in the same boat. It's not as though it just affected the Peets. But, yeah, and, and you mentioned Akil Thomas, and I'm not even sure we had seen the, the, the best of him yet. You know, it's just he was almost just uh, getting into a groove, I think, and then the season came to an end. So I think the, the best of him was going to come out in the playoffs. Um, you know, Hunter Jones was having a, a fantastic year, and, and a shout out to Hunter Jones. He actually had a tribute to uh, his mask this year. He had, uh, you know, my dad on there on the one side in memory of my dad. And, and Hunter won the Gary Dalladay Award uh, for community service. And that's how it sort of came about. 
because they didn't really know each other. But, um, you know, he was having a career year. Uh, you know, everything was, you know, and then Robertson, I mean, you know, how many, could he have got to 60 goals? I mean, he's pretty streaky. I think he probably could have with a few games to go. So, you know, a lot of fans, you know, I feel bad for them because, um, you know, they were waiting for this for a long time. It had been since about 2000, 2006 since the Pete's got into the, the OHL final sort of thing. So, um, what are you going to do? You know, that's 2020. It's, it's been a crazy year, but it was fun to watch. And as, as you say, that, that nine game road trip to start and the Pete still had some home games banked to, to go right to finish up the season. So, um, we'll never know. That's, you know, we'll just never know. And we'll call it, call it like that. So that is yeah. the common awesome. refrain through these, oh. uh, through these calls that I've done with, you know, play by play voices and whatnot. It's, it's always that what could have been, you know, uh, yep. And I guess that we'll leave that to uh, we'll leave that to everyone's imaginations. But uh, hopefully, you know, we get back on track here in the in the coming season. We can, you know, get back to awarding the Robertson Cup every spring and and have everyone's favorite uh, four team showdown on the Memorial Cup once again. You bet. And of course, you know, slated to be in Ontario next spring, so that adds to all the more suspense. Um, it's it's certainly going to be a bit of a turning page for the Peets, though, as they say goodbye to their captain and Zach Gallant, as well as some of the other names we'd mentioned, you know, Declan Chisholm and, and Semyon Dragachinsev, and perhaps even Nick Robertson, if the Maple Leafs like him as much as they seem to in these yeah. playoffs. Um, the Peets look like they're going to be a considerably younger group this coming season. Well, for sure. You mentioned those guys, and, and I, I would think Nick Robertson has probably played his last game as a Peet. Uh, I can't see why the Leafs wouldn't keep them, although they traditionally don't, you know, carry a whole lot of 18, 19 year olds in Toronto. They like to develop, but I think he showed enough there in the playoffs that, uh, you know, he's ready in the NHL. I think is, um, you know, better than me, but I think, I think they're taking kids a little earlier now than, than ever. There's more sort of 19 year olds sort of making their mark now. So if that's the case, if, if they get them back, great. If not, I think this team becomes sort of Mason McTavish's team. Um, he got off to such a great start last year as a rookie and then, you know, maybe lost a little ice when Akil Thomas and some others sort of came in. But he, I mean, he was on pace at one point for about 40 goals and he's just a pure goal scorer. Um, and I, I think you start to build, build the team around him and, you know, he's, he's a hard nosed player as well. I don't think he minds getting into the dirty areas out in front of the net, mucking it up a little bit. And, um, you know, and then some other youth as well. So I think they're in pretty good shape. But, yeah, it could be a little bit of a rebuilding season based on the fact they went for it, right? I mean, they, 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 they bought at the deadline. They weren't sellers. So if you were a seller at the deadline last year, uh, you kind of lucked out in a way because, um, you know, you got that return and, and you're going to be able to take advantage of it over the next couple of years. But uh, Mike Oak's got some, uh, some good prospects there. And hopefully we get to see them on the ice real soon. Yeah, you're right. The ultimate destination of Nick Robertson is is a real big question, and, and nobody quite knows what the answer will be. But, uh, yeah, Mason McTavish, I believe it was 29 goals. This is a 16-year-old. That's nothing to shrug your shoulders at. So lots to look forward to there with one of the league's exciting young forwards. Um, as a guy yourself who's pretty plugged into the Peterborough community and the sports scene there, I'm sure it's uh, kind of been challenging with any Pete's action here over the past few weeks, and typically where we're doing training camps and preseason games and really getting into the rhythm of a new season. I know we all understand the reason behind the delay, but I'm sure it's still kind of bizarre not to be ramping up for another season just yet. Oh, it's, it's really weird. I mean, I, I would normally probably be just heading over to uh, the Evanrood Center right now. And, and um, well, I guess the Memorial Center would have been open last year. We had to use the Evanrood in Peterborough mm -hmm. because the Memorial Center was getting renovated and the renovations, by the way, if no one ever made it in for a game, they look great. The, the glass, everything they did there was, was great. But um, yeah, it is weird. You know, as you know, Thursday nights are tradition nights in, in Peterborough and not to be able to go to the rink on a Thursday, uh, whether it be winter with the Peets or lacrosse uh, in the summer with the Lakers, it, it's very unusual. And, um, you know, you know, come December, hopefully that's the case. I, I had some people contact me. I know a season ticket holder, uh, her name's Lorraine, Lorraine Wagger. And um, she's been a season ticket holder since 19, I think, 60, maybe, I think, 59, maybe. She's missed maybe one, one year. And, you know, she's 82 now. And her, her major concern was if, if she missed the, the, the season ticket deadline. She was so concerned about that yesterday when I was talking to her. 
Um, and I'm like, no, don't worry about it, Lorraine. You know, hang in there. We'll we'll make sure uh, Burton in the office said, don't. We, your tickets are there for you. Don't don't worry about it. But it's that time of year where fans get, you know, they get antsy and they want to get going. And it's a it's a night out, right? Whether mm-hmm. it be a Thursday night or a Saturday night, uh, if we have two home games, and it's. Um, it's something. We have a replay of the uh, 1996 Memorial Cup semifinal game uh, being played in the parking lot coming up with Jeff Tui doing a Q&A. So we got some hockey coming to the Memorial Center. Yeah, the Pete's doing a great job, of course, you know, keeping the fans engaged with some of those interactive uh, events they've held. I know there was recently one out in Lindsay at the drive-in. Yes. Um, yeah, so, some, some great stuff there. And, and believe me when I say, I know the fans are really chomping at the bit. And Myself and a lot of the, uh, you know, front office staff across the league are, are, are really looking forward to getting going. Of course, it's a bit of a hurry up and wait as we, you know, wait upon some answers and, and, and more clarity for, uh, you know, how things are going to come together here. But I'm sure we're going to learn a lot more in the coming weeks. And uh, we really look forward to kind of getting those updates out to fans as they become available. December's not too far away. You know, there's, there's oh. some light at the end of the tunnel and hopefully we can keep COVID-19 under wraps and have a successful return to OHL hockey. I look forward to it, Pete, and I'm sure you do too. So thanks for joining me today. Oh, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure and uh, we'll see you in December. Take care.